Right in the first frame, Halo 4 has got to win. These pods that house future Spartans look suspiciously similar to the starter Spartan 2 armor. I'll explain what I mean by that in a second. I love that match cut between John and Halsey's eyes. From Go, 343 knows the story they want to tell and the themes they want to explore, and it's all perfectly set up visually from the start. You already know everything. Jen Taylor at this point is as much as a win as Steve Downs is in her performance, always being so nuanced with the subtle differences between Cortana and Halsey. You kidnapped them. Some are annoyed that this conversation doesn't amount to anything in the grand scheme of this story, and on a plot level it doesn't, as this Oni man and Halsey never come up again. But what they're discussing is what truly matters. It may be clumsy and could have been integrated better, but I'd argue this is some great exposition on the Spartan program and sets up well for the story to come. And those two things vastly outweigh the scene being in isolation. It is called prologue, after all, and has no obligation to be directly involved with the main story at hand, other than thematically, which it is perfectly. So why do all these Spartans look like Chief? Why don't they have the same armor design as CE? I'm going to ignore the stupid interviews that 343 did explaining Chief's armor upgrade from 3 to 4, because it wasn't explained in game, so I don't care. The same way I don't care that JK Rowling has made up new Harry Potter canon on Twitter. My personal headcanon is that this armor design was the original, and everything else changed and stemmed from it. I mean, it's a hundred times more menacing than Combat Evolve's armor, which would lend perfectly to squashing rebellions. It's the same tactic Riot Gear uses in the US. After the narrative changed to being super soldiers, they softened up to design. My work saved the human race. Yeah, that's quite the argument. And the moral issues this man is discussing is quite softball in the grand scheme. Halsey may be in cuffs right now, but she's really in control. Do you believe the Master Chief succeeded because he was, at his core, broken? What does John have to do with this? I love that the connection between John and Cortana extends to Halsey. By all rights, Halsey should have no real care or understanding about John and his connection with Cortana, but she does, and it just primes us to be excited for what's to come in this story. And also it could read as a motherly protective instinct, as in a way, these are all her children. She doesn't want her prized child on the firing line, so to speak. Your mistake is seeing Spartans as military hardware. I love this line because beyond Halsey's cold lines about children becoming easier to indoctrinate and them being kidnapped and placed in cells, here you can see that she really does care for them. Though she may have built them originally to be oppressors, the UNSC took them and viewed them as weapons to be pointed. The discrepancy I'm loving is the hypocrisy of this Oni man judging Halsey for creating them to go on and use them to save humanity. Beyond that, he doesn't seem to care as she does about them, about who they've become after their evolution. My Spartans are humanity's next step. Our destiny as a species. This prologue perfectly sets up everything that is to come. And the reason I believe Halsey is so stalwart in her ideals is because the extensive research she has done her entire life into the Forerunners. It only makes sense that she, of all people, would understand what John comes to realize when speaking to the librarian. Do not underestimate them. But most of all, do not underestimate him. Say what you will about 343 and their take on Halo, but I think we are all in agreement that this opening cutscene is fantastic and a great way to get us back into the saddle to play as Chief. I would be mistaken to not be an immature boy and acknowledge Cortana's newfound thickness. 343 had their fun, and after sitting around for four years bored, you can imagine that it was bound to happen. Wake up, Chief. I need you. After five years of waiting for the continuation of the story, there were only so many ways you could make waking up from an ice sleep epic. And boy, did 343 do it well. With the music and Cortana's perfect line of, I need you, not we. Where are we? We're still adrift on the dawn. Why did you wake me? Right away, we could all tell there was something different about this chief. Our boy is talking a lot more. This was a clear choice made by 343 to give Chief more agency, and I actually welcome it. I've heard that Chief having a small amount of lines helps us imprint upon him, and that this game goes through so much to humanize him, but I never saw it that way. I actually thought that Chief had so much humanity and personality in his own way in previous titles that I never imprinted upon him. 
He was chief, and he was our badass, but he was not us. So in 4, gave him probably more lines in this game than all previous ones combined. I was delighted. And though Steve Downs is given much more to work with, his characterization never falters throughout. He's still our lovable brick through and through. I rewrote your seat firmware while you were out. There's our didactic reason for the new UI. Great. Love to see it. But then there's the question of Chief's armor. They explained in an interview that it was nanobots that upgraded it in cryosleep, but like I mentioned earlier, I don't really care. How often does art style change between games made by the same developer? No sh things were going to change when 343 took over. And honestly, why does it really matter? I haven't really seen anyone complain or wonder why Cortana got new hips. Sure, she's an AI and can look however she wants, but you see my point. Chief's new armor is sexy, and I'm tired of people looking for any reason to be angry at anything. Especially when it's new management just trying their best. Chief, look up. You need to pull the manual release. Hey, look at that. Having our looking around tutorial this time being a bit more active than just some lights. Chief doesn't wait a second and wants a closer look, if you know what I mean. Seems like old times. Ready to get back to work? is directly talking to the players here, and I think stuff like this in games is super cute. The new HUD took a second to get used to, with Chief's physical helmet being in it, but our brains are great at what they do, and you just start ignoring it after a few seconds, and it's just another cool way to get us into Chief's boots. And also the fact that the helmet reacts to the light around it. Somebody should have found us by now. Well, someone did. Sensor scan, high intensity, doesn't match any known patterns. Forerunner, foreshadowing. Quick time events and everything they stand for, but I love any time Chief shows off his massive strength. Assassinations are back and as good as ever. It's possible we just came across a rogue salvage ship. I'm always a fan of the visuals directly opposing what a character has just said to believe. Leave it to Chief to be falling from somewhere on his opening mission. You may find it stupid, but I like the little details such as this. Not crash landing with our guns fully loaded. Did I reload before the end of the last fight? Did something go off when falling? Made it through the roof. And the sounds of the reloads on most guns are just so satisfying for. There's the classic beautifully large Halo skybox. For all the hate 343 gets for changing Halo, there are some things you can't deny they did right. Nice to see your luck is holding out. Just one as many callbacks to previous titles. And can I just say that from Combat Evolved, the Warthog has always been one of the most satisfying vehicles in all of gaming to drive. I mean, I haven't played a Halo game yet that I don't like it in. About my condition, I didn't want to mention it, seeing as how it's a complete long shot, but since you brought it up, it is possible that getting home could help me find a solution for my rampancy. Would I have preferred a bigger build-up to the rampancy reveal, for sure. A dedicated moment or cuts even? Yes. But it's kind of cool that we're just vibing in the car with our girlfriend, and she's like, you know, I'm going crazy, right? And like most men would do, doesn't really say anything about it. I'm not going to talk too much about gameplay in this video, as we've got four previous Halo videos before this detailing my thoughts on it and its evolution. 4 doesn't really do anything to push the ball forward, it just kind of plays it safe with Reach's armor abilities and some new weapons, which I'll talk about soon. It's good, and feels like Bungie's gameplay, and that's all we could have hoped for in this first outing. It's a localized site cartographer. I don't know if I've been playing too much Halo recently, or if the games have just done something to me, but when I hear cartographer, I just get happy to feel like everything is okay. Does that make sense? Does the word transport you back to Combat Evolved Mission 4? I know I didn't play Combat Evolved until recently, but the game has that magical allure that I can't describe, but I'm sure some of you feel along with me. Should I even talk about Sprint? It's kind of like Don Cheadle coming into the MCU to play Rhodey. Look, it's me. I'm here. Deal with it. Let me see if I can figure out a way to reach these coordinates that doesn't involve us digging a really big hole. Emil would have liked Cortana. Is it weird to like all the sound effects associated with Chief's armor? Chief, go! Not even Chief is immune to some bad enemy design. <coughs> I mean, weird off the cuff teleporting. To the first beam pylon. Pull me, and let's go. Pull me, yank me. Though she's under new management, Cortana hasn't changed. Prometheans get a neat little scream introduction, just like the Covenant did. And with 4, they did some things that people didn't like. But at the end of the day, 343 didn't try to reinvent the wheel. They kept the gameplay simple to ease us and themselves into the new Halo experience. Yes, knights aren't nearly as engaging as the Covenant, but it's something new. And I will always appreciate trying something new instead of doing what would have been safe. Which leads me to the conversation about Halo rings. 
game's namesake. This one isn't centered around the ring, and thank God for that. I know ODST and Reach weren't, but even in 1 through 3, I was getting tired of the stories around the game. So I'm really excited to learn more of the Forerunners, as they have been these mysterious precursors for so long. If Chief is struggling to pull this out, then you bet your ass Forerunner technology is nothing to mess with. I can't help but feel this shield was a direct response to the crazy armor lock from Reach. I feel the need to acknowledge the very samey gameplay of Halo 4. It's pretty much all just go here, press buttons, or destroy a thing. And the vehicle sections were nothing to write home about as well. I don't want to keep coming back to this defense of Halo 4, but this is 343's first game in the series. They had ginormous shoes to fill. I really don't blame them for playing it safe. I might be alone in this, but the Promethean weapons are super cool. Having them feel like a Transformer when you pick them up immediately gives them their own distinct quality, independent of the other factions. Halo has also been really great at giving their factions clear and concise art designs, and 343 doesn't miss that beat. Why does it feel like the die deck is mocking Chief here? I hope he is, because the level of pettiness is super cute for a being such as him. Man, this imagery really feels like this would be a Tony Stark created villain. The librarian left little to chance, didn't she? Turning my own guardians, my own world, against me. We get little hints like these in the slog mess of the librarian scene, but it's all really good lore they wanted to add into the Halo canon. If you watch the terminals, everything makes 10 times more sense. It doesn't feel like we are rushing to the finish line, scratching the surface of this story. Granted, many of us don't care for the terminals and only care for the story that is front and center, so I feel I'm in a bind, as I believe all stories should make sense without outside assistance, but the terminals are so good. So can we do a net win of zero? Is that a thing? The foreigners have returned. Now that's a badass reveal along the dope ass helmet. So many games we've heard of the foreigners, but now seeing one face to face is unreal. That didact, he manipulated Infinity's signal to get us to release him. Why does Cortana know to call him the didact? Well, she says that didact, which implies that she doesn't know that that's his real name and is just using it as a label since didact means over inclined to instruct others. And if that fun reasoning is stupid and over analytical for you, then she's been plugged into the Covenant Battle.net for a long time and would have heard his name since he's been around for a lot longer than just four. It's not as cool as any of the other hog runs, but it's a little fun sequence. And Covenant gear this time. You know where he's heading. Same place we are. Frey, we're gonna have to give you an IOU on that welcome home party. Last key has gotta be the best character introduced in four. Didact and Librarian are just too much. Del Rio is just force. Palmer does nothing but Lasky. Oh baby, he's our brother throughout and feels like a real person that understands real people things. God, if that's how I'm reaching for wins in a character for a game, that probably speaks to its overall true quality. I thought you'd be taller. Cute, but like, that's the Master Chief. The hell have you done to joke with our boy the way Johnson would have? And being a fellow Spartan doesn't count. Captain thought Infinity could provide us cover and hold off the attack at the same time. At least we get some setup for how f***ing stupid, short-sighted, and overconfident Del Rio is. I don't suppose you're any good at clearing LZs. On occasion. 343 does know how to give their chiefs some fun one-liners, though. I like the Cortana Rampancy plot. She's always been our rock in a way, and to have her malfunction gives us, the players, an easy thread to grasp onto and understand this new Halo. Sorry about back there. And then she apologizes because she's best girl. Now, that has got to be one of the most fun new vehicles to be added to Halo in a long ass time. It feels silly at first, but after a few moments of using it, who really cares? This is a first contact scenario, Master Chief. Priority is to free Infinity from Requiem's gravity well and file a threat assessment back at Fleetcom. You can look at Del Rio for being an idiot or sh** here, but in all reality, he's just following protocol. He and the rest of his crew have no idea what they're dealing with and need to be under control of their own ship before pursuing some random new threat. I love this look between them. No words needed to understand what they're saying to each other. I usually like a little more intel with my intel. You know I love me some center framing. You want the Sometimes being creative with a name is no fun. You just gotta call it what it is. At least Halo 4 keeps some spectacle intact. We literally think ourselves to death. I think a lot of us laying in bed at night can relate, Cortana. You're not that special. Who are you? I am what remains of the Forerunner. 
Time to lose our collective minds on possibly the biggest exposition dump I've ever encountered. Voldemort's wife. Sorry, I had to say it. The composer had been intended to bridge the organic and digital realms. It would have made us immortal. Assassin's Creed would like to have a word with you. Seeds which would lead to an eventuality. Is it just me, or is eventuality one of the most pretentious words in the Webster Dictionary? I know that's rich coming from me, but you know what I mean? You might think I glossed over, missed, or ignored a lot of the librarian's speech, and you'd be somewhat right on the last one. Oh, I've listened to it many times, and every time I hear it, it makes me like the game less and less. I know I'm supposed to look for the good in video games, but this is just lazy and uninspired. I was already on shaky ground from the first four missions, but this speech broke the glass under my feet. Yes, it's great to make us understand the didact more, but I can't help but wonder the why. Why hinge our entire understanding of the plot on one five-minute scene? Yes, the story still kind of works, regardless of the scene, because the game has the bright idea of having plot and story be s literally separate from each other. That was some weak sarcasm, if you couldn't tell. But let me explain. Plot is what happens. Story is what our characters experience, and what messages we are left with. The plot of Halo 4 is stop the Didact because he's going to kill us. Ooh. And the story is about Chief and Cortana's relationship, and if John is more machine than man, and what it means for Cortana as an AI to be in love with John. They do some cute things with the Didact in conjunction with John's story, but never enough to warrant him being this game's antagonist, really. Maybe I'm being too harsh, but this scene is really hard to get over, so honestly, I'm going to have to remove a win for the first time. If you feel differently, please let me know down below, and I'd tell you to leave a dislike, but YouTube took that away from us, so everything's just going great today. <sighs> At least Infinite's good. I understand what you think you saw. Think? With all due respect, sir. I love that Chief constantly calls Del Rio sir, even when he's wronger than can be. I will not allow you to leave this planet! Seeing Cortana like this is genuinely scary. The didact has to be stopped. If you won't do that, I will. I'm not a fan of the way Del Rio becomes to be this pest, but the idea of Chief being at odds with his superiors is awesome to see. He could rip him in half if he wanted to, but shows the utmost respect still. To surrender that AI! No, sir. You know, though, Del Rio doesn't even take a step back. You can't deny this man's stones. Arrest that man! Captain. Arrest him! Arrest the Master Chief? <laughs> yeah, okay. Didn't know we were at a stand-up show. The Didact used this composer to create the Prometheans from ancient humans. I guess it's cool and thematically appropriate that Chief and Cortana have to fight man and machine gone wrong, as that's the titular question they are facing themselves. It's never really answered, and it really just boils down to the simple trope of fighting the mere version of oneself, but it's something. Flying a pelican is cool for the first time. Should I go in to describe why it's like Lester? No, 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 I know I have to be positive. Flying a pelican. Woo! At least Chief still doesn't give a fuck about just jumping into some enemy ships because it's the next best option. You know, it might just be me, but this ship really kind of looks like the Didax helmet. Either this is some stellar art design or I'm just an idiot. And I'm okay if it's both. Then why are they bypassing it? Because the composers- At least they threw the Halo theme in when Chief viewed the ring. Do you know what that condescending bitch said to me after our first game of chess? <laughs> now, that's hilarious. Hold up! Now! It feels like a reference to Combat Evolve's final mission, so I'll give it to him. Maybe next time you rescue us? You can give us more time to pack? Next time. Shit like this during gameplay will never get old. Well, that's quite brutal. I kind of like that she's sitting there like she was at the start, just waiting for Chief. Without him, she's got nothing. I could hear them. What was left of them? We need to move. I like that line from Chief since it kind of reinforces the conversation with Halsey at the very start, especially contrasting that to what the AR Cortana is going through. This game has glints of greatness. The broadsword flight is fun. I'm stopping there because if I talk about my actual personal experience, I haven't been more frustrated with the video game level in recent. It's good. A solid shakeup with a typical gameplay formula. The future is some real sh Basically being able to pocket a nuke. Plan B. I mean, wasn't it plan A all along to get the nuke to do something with the didactic composer? Like, that's pretty much all the plan was. But I mean, I guess hand delivering it is the technical plan B. But it's still kind of plan A. 
Though he got smacked, at least he did the cool cover art pose. So misguided. <laughs> Irony. Your compassion for mankind is misplaced. I'm not doing this for mankind. Find yourself a woman like Cortana. And Cortana saved the day is actually pretty cool, since it's been Chief lapping up the credit every other time. I only held enough back to get you off the ship. No. That's not... We go together. I love Steve Down's performance with this script. Not too much to just play out his emotions, but just enough to get his turmoil. I've waited so long to do that. That's actually pretty beautiful. And I love that she touches the damaged side of the suit. She touches him there and then is gone. And it's kind of like a part of Chief is hewn from himself and is represented on his armor. It was my job to take care of you. We were supposed to take care of each other. Martin O'Donnell is very much missed throughout 4, as all the music just blended into the background. But right here, where the music needed to come through, it does. And it's a gorgeous track playing during this goodbye. Wait. And listen to that transformed Halo thing. Mwah. Of course not, sir. At ease, Chief. Feels kind of odd for you to call me sir. About time someone in universe acknowledged it. You don't talk much, do you? I mean, compared to what we're used to, he's a chatterbox in this game. But overall, Chief retains that strong, silent type. Our duty as soldiers is to protect humanity. Whatever the cost. I know everyone thought duty's the death of love was a stupid boat floated in Game of Thrones, but let's not pretend that it's an actual reality many of us might face. She said that to me once. I love this somewhat somber, bittersweet ending. I do. I think it's wonderfully shot, excellently scored, and well-placed in the narrative. Oh, you were expecting a butt. No, not this time, I'll spare you that. We gotta stay somewhat positive. Even 343 understands the mantle of responsibility that they have been granted by taking on the Halo franchise, and I bet they have been horrified this entire time, even leading up to Infinite. But do not doubt the reality. The reclamation has already begun. Now, for all of Halo 4's faults, that's a pretty badass way to end it. Boy, oh boy, Halo 4. I know many of you will see this video as very mean-spirited and not in the line with this channel's ethos. And I'm sorry for that because I cannot be completely objective all the time as I'm still human. So when it came to winning this game, it was exhausting. And for every win that could have been, there more often than not was a reason counteracting it that made me unable to completely go through with it. Halo 4 is a game made up of great moments that falls apart when looked at as a whole. Halo 4 was 343's first true foray into the universe in creating their own identity within the Halo franchise. No one wants to be an exact copy of someone else's work. I know some will laugh at me for saying that with this channel's very existence, but I can take it. Halo 4 was not a great story. A fine game, sure. They had massive shoes to fill, and I believe that they recognized that. I look at Halo 4 sadly as an experiment and test run for 343 to understand what the hell they were getting themselves into. I mean, I can kind of relate because my thoughts and opinions on Combat Evolved were met with mad scrutiny, just like Halo 4. And even more depressingly, it took until Infinite to get a halfway decent story out of them. I know this isn't even close to what you normally come for on this channel, but I'd rather not just lie, you know what I mean? I'd rather not just perpetuate that Halo 4 is great and I pointed out you know what I believe everything to be great is and it wasn't much and I feel the need to be honest with this game. Halo 4 was not what we wanted in the slightest. It was very disappointing but at least this one step had to be taken to reignite the Halo franchise and without 4 we wouldn't have had the fun gameplay of Infinite today now would we? Not every company can jump off with a game as strong as Combat Evolved but they got there. And that's what truly matters. This might have been the most difficult video I've ever had to make. And difficult video to record. Even more than my Far Cry 5 video, which long-term fans <laughs> will know that was a struggle. But we did it, and I'm glad we did it. And it was um, something. So for those of you still watching, thank you. Thank you so much for your support. And uh, remember, drive the speed limit, drink some water, and love one another. Pizza, everybody. Have a good night.